check. Good morning, everyone. Woo! How's everybody doing this morning? Up on your feet. If you want to. I mean, I mean. <laughs> Arise, shine, for your light is come. Or is it awake you who sleep and rise from the dead, and Christ will give you light? Probably both. <laughs> Praise God. So I'm driving here, and this, the, the idea of holiness was resounding through my spirit over and over and over again and and I was actually worshiping and the song was about holiness and purity and and I saw this vision and I saw this angel standing by the altar in heaven where the coals of fire are and the angel leaned over and it blew on the coals and fire spread throughout the congregation. And then I heard the scripture out of Isaiah. It says, I see the Lord high and lifted up, and the train of his glory fills the temple. So I want to invite you to come from the to the front. and receive during worship the purifying fire from the altar of heaven. And I'm gonna apologize for this in advance even though I'm really not sorry. If you don't think that you need it, you're wrong. You can receive it in your seat or you could receive it up here, but if you don't think you need it, you probably need it really, really badly. I know that I need it, and I need it really, really badly. Desperately. You know that desperation often equals action. Right? And I think that with all the remarkable things that are happening around our nation, oh, I was just looking at Cedarville this morning. Thousands of kids. This is in Dayton. At the altar, crying out to God, repenting, choosing Jesus, choosing holiness. This is not a fluke. And if you want it and you're hungry, you're hungry for it, I want to encourage you to come down to the front. And I am going to pray, Father, we want you. <laughs> Jesus, we want you. Holy Spirit, we want you. We are so hungry and so full of desire for you. You are the one thing. And God, regardless of, of what our shames are, regardless of what our shortcomings are, regardless of what it is that's going on in our life, today we yield before a holy God in a holy window and a holy season and we say, God, we want all of everything that you have for us. So we lift you up in worship this morning. We give you all of the glory, all of our adoration, all of the affection that we have within every ounce of our beings. In Jesus' name, amen. I feel like some of you need to come up all the way to the front, like toes to the stage, and see what the Lord's going to do. I feel it in my bones. 
catch it if you can He's moving on the wind The dawn is breaking Lift your eyes to see He's better than you dreamed And everything you've lost Love's returning Love's returning Love's returning Love's returning Yeah. 
just begin to verbalize, sing out your hunger before the Lord. Come on, lift up your voice before Him. There is something in the air, there's something available for you this morning.
sensitive to what the Lord's doing in the room right now, but I felt like the Lord wanted to bring breakthrough and healing with, with those who are struggling with anxiety right now. And so if you need freedom, you need deliverance in your mind, can you just lift up your hand and just receive that from him this morning? He wants to release supernatural peace and breakthrough. There's hands going up all over the room. This is really good. Thank you, Holy Spirit. just yield to the spirit right now in this moment there's going to be breakthroughs released all over this room so I just want you to tell him say I yield to you Holy Spirit I give in Are you? 
for the Lord God Almighty reigns.
okay, I feel like today I have to share. <laughs> so please excuse me, because when the Holy Spirit touches me, I weep. <laughs> and I can't get it under control, so bear with me. Uh, for the last seven months, I've been experiencing what we're calling a personal revival. <laughs> the Lord has moved in and wrecked my life all oh, in a way I've never experienced before. And in the last couple months, I've been feeling like what he's been doing in me is for a greater purpose. And I've been feeling like revival in my bones. And I've been feeling like revival is here. We just have to press into it. So when the Asbury revival broke out, I couldn't sleep for two nights straight because I was tossing and turning thinking about revival, which is just not usually how I spend my nights. And so I woke up one morning and I was like, I have to go. I need to see what this revival is. So I got in the car with a friend and I drove. And when I got in there, with, with what I've been experiencing with the Lord, I feel like I'm very open. And I wanted to have an open mind going in and I went in and it was just people worshiping. And I sat there and I thought, is this revival? <laughs> it doesn't look like what I'm used to revival looking like. I grew up when people would experience revival, they would shake and cry and laugh and fall to their faces. And I just remember being eight years old, laying under the chairs during revival and just hearing people laugh. And so I walked into this room and people were just worshiping. It wasn't this grand expression except for worship. And I thought, is this revival? And I felt like the Holy Spirit said to me, watch me move. And I was like, okay, sorry, Lord, I'll watch. And what I saw was people of all ages, babies, children, teenagers, college age students, young adults, and old people, all together, all different ethnicities, and coming from all different areas of Christianity. And I thought, this is revival. It was the hunger. We have to be hungry. And he wants to fill us, but we have to be hungry. And so I've come back from there with this, the Lord is here, but we need to hunger and want it because he wants to move. And I love that they sang about the veil tearing because in the last seven months, the Lord has been speaking to me about the Ark of the Covenant and about holiness. And I've been feeling like the move of the Lord that's coming is a holiness movement. When you go to Asbury, there are kids repenting of their sins. That's what revival looks like. When the Lord fills, <laughs> he takes up so much space that there's no room for anything else except his presence. And let me tell you from someone who's been experiencing it for the last seven months, when he fills you, <sighs> the way that your world changes is unlike anything that you've ever known. And I've been a believer my whole life. I've experienced the Holy Spirit, but this is just something greater where he's moved in and it almost pushes the stuff out of your life, the junk. Just by him coming in, I talked to people who were like, well, so you don't watch a bunch of TV anymore. Is it because you felt like you were sinning? And I said, no, I didn't feel convicted from watching TV. I've been filling myself with the Lord. And it's just been a natural thing that I've let go of because it's just not, I don't care anymore. I just want his presence. And I want you guys to experience it too. But when I sat there and I saw that my initial thought was, is this revival? I thought, oh no. Are, we, are people going to come in here and see how it's not like our normal revival? And then they're going to miss it. And so I came here yesterday and I prayed. And I felt like there was significance about the altar and um, so if you're in your seats, I mean, this is no pressure to you. I'm all about the Lord can move at any place in the room. 
<laughs> where he's not confined to one spot. But when we talked about the veil tearing, when Jesus died and breathed his last breath, the veil tore, which means we had full access to the presence of the Lord. Whereas before, it was only certain people who could go in and access the Holy Spirit. We can access it and it's here. And so there is something about stepping forward in faith and activation of stepping out of your comfort zone, coming down to the front. The presence is really thick here. <laughs> and he can radically transform your life. So we're gonna keep worshiping for a while longer. My dad's in Florida preaching at another church, so I'm in charge. <laughs> And I just encourage you, I mean, it's worth, it's worth it to just give yourself fully to the Lord. So if we can sing another song together, and I just encourage you, even if you have a glimmer of hunger, that's a sign that the Holy Spirit is moving in you. Even if you don't feel hunger for the Lord, stepping out in faith can unleash his glory in your life. Just an act of obedience. If the Lord is calling you forward, don't do it if you don't feel like that's what you need to do. I don't want you to feel pressured, but just stepping forward. <laughs> just wait and see what he can do. I'm desperate I will pursue 
I also got the opportunity to go down to Asbury to see what the Lord is doing. And one of the things that really struck me and stood out to me is how the Lord is highlighting Gen Z right now. Yeah. You know, Gen Z gets a bad rep that they don't care or they're disengaged or something. Let me tell you something. God is breathing on that generation yeah. right now. Across all the campuses, Gen Z is being risen up. And when they get behind the microphone to lead worship, when they get behind the mic to share their testimony, the Lord loves it. And he is pouring out revival through them. When I stood there in the room, they would go down through the testimony line and they'd ask for 25 and under. And they'd ask somebody before they give their testimony and they said, I'm 26. They said, thank you and move on. There, there's, there's a move that is happening in Gen Z right now. Yeah. And so we want to pray for any of the, any Gen Zers in the room right now. Do I have any Gen Zers? If you could wave at me, anybody who's Gen Z. Can I have you guys come to the middle right here, like right in front of that row? Can I have, have you all kind of make your way here? And if anybody who's there, who is not Gen Z can make like a little bit of space, just kind of like a hole in the front here. Hi, Gen Z. <laughs> As they're making their way down, you know, then when they're around, you guys just, you know, there's a couple more coming up here. My, my Gen Z ears, this is gonna be good. Is that gonna be good? Gen Z. Can you stay there? Yeah, I can go down there, it's fine. Yeah, okay, we're talking down there. So we're going to get all of our Gen Zers down here, and I just want us to take a moment of time to just really pray and, um, and prophesy over them and minister to them. So if you're in our ministry teams around them, I'm looking at them right now. I'm going to come down and pray for you guys, too, as well in a minute. So if I get pastoral care, and the rest of you just extend a hand towards them right now. Um, whoo. Holy Spirit. Angela, can you come up here for a sec? Angela Weber. Yeah, Jesus, we just thank you for this generation, God. And Lord, we get out of the way that they may rise up, God. We do not care who gets the glory except for you, Jesus. And so we declare your glory would rest upon this generation, God, in such a powerful way, Lord. I saw a young woman over in this corner and I just felt the burning of the fire of God and that the, those who were in the back were coming into the forefront to lead this move of God. And Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for their hearts, Jesus. We thank you for their lives, Jesus. Lord, we declare just a, a Holy Spirit fire inside each one of them that is not consumed, like it consumes everything else in their lives, God, because you take precedence, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Let your breath breathe on them, Lord. Let your breath breathe on them, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you that you are in their midst. God, thank you for the stirring that is happening all across the country. But it's here. You're here. You are here. Thank you that you are here. Thank you that you are moving, God. Thank you, Jesus. Never the same, guys, never the same. Like these aren't just little moments that we then remember years ago or years to come. It's like you are never the same when you encounter the Holy Spirit and you encounter his love and you encounter who he has made you to be. He has made you to be victorious. He has made you to be a light in this world. And we thank you, Jesus, for your passion that burns inside of them, God, to see the world set on fire for you, Jesus. Yeah, we just lay everything else down for the sake of following you, Lord, to know you and to be known by you. Thank you, Lord. Keep your, keep your prayers centered towards them, but also if you would stretch your, your left hand towards the uh, room over there where our kids are being ministered to right now. 
Father, we bless our children. We bless that what you're doing here in this house right now. Father, would you release it over Gen Z, Gen A? God, would you cause revival to pour out over them even right now? Whatever game they're playing, whatever message they're hearing, that the presence of God would invade the room even now. Lord, we just we bless this next generation to carry the torch, to pick up the light, to be the revival that this world needs to see. Lord, thank you for their intolerance for anything that is not real, their intolerance for anything that is religious or formless and void without power. Thank you for a thirst and a drive for the real. Father, I pray that you would release it now in Jesus' name in our house, in Bethel, Cleveland, that you would raise up Gen Z and all the children, God, to be radically touched by the Lord, that they have stories for the rest of their lives about revival under the chairs and how the Lord spoke and ministered to them. We just prophesy that in Jesus' name. Stay in this place. On the way to church this morning, my wife was listening to a worship song, and my son leans back, and what does he say? He says, the Jesus is really hot on this one. <laughs> the Holy Spirit's really warm on this one. There's a song called Getting Ready. Getting ready for the bride to come, for the, for the, for the groom to come, for the bride can't talk. <laughs> um, one of the things that is happening right now that the Lord is doing is that there is power being released over the spoken testimony and over even the confession of, of sin. And so I wanted to call up um, one of our very own Michelle Volus, and I don't know where you are. If I could find Michelle, come on up here. You may know Michelle, she starred in a couple of our plays. just, uh, while we were worshiping, I, I just got the impression that God, God is doing a new thing. He's, I mean, he does new things all the time, but I mean, he's doing a really big new thing. And he said to me, when I walk through the doors today, look for me in everything you do, in everything, everything you see, everything, every place you go, I will be there. I will open doors that no man can close, or woman. I will close doors that no matter what, you cannot be open. And I will uh, have you do things with me, God, uh, that are impossible. It is flat out impossible without God. But with God, it's, it's gonna blow doors off and other people are gonna see this. Other people are gonna see this and you're not ha gonna have to say a word. They're going to come to know God just because of you. Thanks, Bob. Wow. Coming? We have more coming. Where, where's, where's my guy, Daniel Lobato? Anybody, if you, if you feel the Holy Spirit moving on, you give a testimony. I'm going to ask you to make your way to the front row, not like an uprush, but to my wife, Ashley, right there. She's, <laughs> as she said, she's in charge at this point. <laughs> So make your way over there. Um, but I want to invite Aunt Daniel to come up here. Come on up here, man. Wow. 
when we started worshiping earlier, I was in the back. And I felt like God was saying, we need to get the weights off. The weights that are hindering us and holding us back. you got to get them off. <laughs> if that's you, raise your hand and just give it to him. Get the weights off. And I also felt like he was saying, <laughs> there's no greater command than this, that you lay down your life for a friend that you love one another even as I have loved you love one another if you cannot honestly say that you love your neighbor as Christ loves you then you need to ask him to help you love is what's going to break off the things that are holding you back you have to love one another it's easy to love a family member, but do you love your neighbor? Do you love that coworker? Do you love your boss? Ask him, and he will help you. Amen. Amen. Just so you know, this is what happened in Asbury, too. People just start sharing their testimonies. It's powerful. Yeah, I just felt like going off what Daniel said, like, yeah, we need to love each other, but we also need to know that we are so loved. And you can't earn it, guys. I tried for a long time, and you can't earn it. And actually, just right now, I want you to just put your hand on your heart. And I want you to tell your heart heart. You have permission to receive all of the love that God has for you. And you can't earn it. You can stop trying. You have permission to just receive it. You know, we have a word holy, we sing in different songs. Um, I'm 44 years old, 22 years ago, uh, Jesus met me as a Muslim and I became Christian. He has been good. I have been through lots of trials, but um, the second 22 years of my life, have seen a lot of him. But one of the words that we always sing holy, today we were singing a song, has been a religious word to me. Okay, God is holy, God is good, and I have seen a lot of his goodness. But today was different. When we um, became a little bit late, so we were back, and uh, as I was singing holy, It seems like I'm saying, God, I can trust you because you are perfect. You are, we are not under a corrupt government. We are under perfect government of God. He's holy. So you can trust him. So the angels that were surrounding God and saying, holy, 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 they keep repeating it as this is, they are keep grabbing the fruit of tree of life. You're receiving this. I wanted to picture it this way. Next time you say holy, that means you're grabbing that fruit of tree of life. You're getting life in you and you're getting connected, the life of God in you. By saying holy, just remember, you are saying, God, you are good. You are good. There is no corruption in you. There is no weakness on you. There is no forgiveness, forgetting on you. You just watch over me and I can trust you. And when you sing holy, I feel like this holiness, that grabbing that fruit, this holiness is flowing in us that we cannot, we cannot be holy without Him. So I, I just wanted you to, next time that you sing holy, 
picture it. That I'm grabbing that fruit that brings more fruit in your life. Come well, on, let's act let's act in faith on that. Lift up your hands and let's sing that together. Holy, holy are you Lord God Almighty. Worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb, you are holy, holy, are you Lord God Almighty, worthy is the Lamb. to a moment where this is the reason why we come to church. This is the reason why we, we seek after him. He's the star. He's the center. He's the one that we want. And I asked my wife to come back up here because I was hoping that she might pray over you. I'll give you the mic right here that I'm holding. <laughs> come on up. <laughs> Let's just lift our hands to the Lord. Lord, we just thank you for your goodness. And we thank you for your mercy. Your mercy extends beyond further than we could ever imagine. And it's because of your mercy that you're moving in this place and in our nation. And Lord, we just ask you to come. <laughs> we welcome you, Holy Spirit. Lord, I just ask that throughout this week that we're going into, that you'll begin resting heavy on your people and speaking to them. Lord, that you'll reveal yourself that people will begin to dream dreams and to see where you are. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness. Thank you that we have access. any more testimonies that come up come find my wife but one of the beautiful things about what the Lord is doing is that we can just keep going and he's still here and he's still moving I felt like the Lord wanted to move in power um, especially those who are ill with like cancer those who uh, even needing life released on the inside of their body to do with children, babies, that kind of thing. 
the Lord's here for that too. And so what I'd like to do is if you would just put your hand over the area that, the, that you need the Lord to touch you in, whether it's your mind, whether it's your heart, whether it's your, your stomach, your where, like hips, joints, all that stuff. I believe that the Lord is just wanting to release corporate healing like a, a big wave across the room right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Be healed. Call every mind right now that su suffers under the weight of anxiety, fear, and torment. Be set free in Jesus' name right now. Every artery that's clogging the hearts right now, be unblocked right now. Every hip that's hurting, no cartilage, cartilage regrow in Jesus' name right now. towards you. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ his son give thanks with a grateful heart give thanks to the holy one give thanks because he's given Jesus Like the Lord was like, hey, Jay's going to call you up here and you have to share your testimony. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to say. And then I went back to a friend of mine and she goes, I don't know that this is thus saith the Lord, but are you like, are you supposed to go up and share a testimony? And I'm like, but I don't know what I'm supposed to say. And um, so I'm the first year of Gen Z. I'm 25, 90, 1997. And there's been, there's been a shame on it for me for some reason of like, I'm like, oh no, I may be the first year, but I'm, a, I'm, I'm more a millennial than I am a Gen Z. And I felt the Lord just like burn in my heart for that while I was down here of like, my heart is for Gen Z too. 
My heart is to see them saved too. My heart is to see them walking in power too. And so I felt like I was supposed to get up here and just declare that, that like, I am proud to be a part of Gen Z. I'm proud of what the Lord is doing in this generation. Like, I'm proud. I get to, I see some of my youth kids up here and I'm just like, Lord, do in them what you've done in me. Do in them what you've done in the generations before. Like, pour out your spirit. Like, Colton, Dawson, like all of you, everybody who's up here, God, I just ask that you would pour out your spirit over the kids in high school. I feel like there's a special anointing over kids in high school right now because it is a tough one. Claudia and Elia, wherever you are, and Chai, all of my kids who are in here, I bless you to feel the power of the Holy Spirit right now, right here where you're standing. I bless you to receive his love in a way that you haven't received it before. So I felt, so that was the first part that I was, felt like I was supposed to say. The second part is, I, for the last, gosh, 20 years of my life, have dealt with night terrors repeatedly. I've prayed, I've asked for healing, I've gone and seen doctors, I've done all the things. And last week, the Lord started talking to me, and it, all that to say, I've done all the things where I'm like, Lord, I don't know what to do anymore. And last week, the Lord started speaking to me about what surrender looks like. And he's like, Rachel, I need you to surrender your mind and your will to under, your need to understand. And I was like, okay, God, but what does that mean? And he's like, exactly. And I was like, no, <laughs> like I need to understand. And he's like, no. And so I've been in this battle with him over the last week of like, God, I don't know what it looks like to surrender my sleep to you, to surrender my dreams to you. And he said, I just need you to surrender it. Like whatever, like you don't need to understand what that means. And I feel like that's a word for people in here. Like surrender can be a hard concept, but this, what we're experiencing in revival, it's so easy. Surrender really is so easy when you partner with the Lord. The last, so for the start on Thursday night, three weeks, every night I woke up with panic attacks and night terrors and I wasn't sleeping well and I wasn't doing well. And on Thursday I was able to get away and I went to a hotel and I was staying the night in a hotel. I have slept the last three nights soundly with no night terrors, nothing. And it's really hard to be like, okay, Lord, I've, I've had this experience before where I've gone three days, I've gone a week, but he's like, Rachel, I just need you to surrender it to me. I just need you to lay it down, whatever that looks like. So whatever that is in your life, just surrender it, just lay it down to receive him. He, he's what we receive in it. He's what we receive in surrender. And that's what this revival is all about. That's what he's doing. He's just giving himself to us. So just receive it. That's all. <laughs> Anybody who struggles with night terrors, sleep, any of those things, uh, Rachel's going to be down at the front to pray over and release victory over you, which is great. Father, we just release surrender. If you, if you need to surrender some things in your life, you know, I, I feel like that there's also a surrender uh, for like sickness and, and, th and even what happened in, in April, like being radically touched and healed by the Lord, right? There's a surrender to that healing and to giving into that. So just lift up your hands and if you need to surrender, I want you to sing it out before the Lord. As we have another person. Yeah, come on up. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hi, so my name's Amelia, and this is my first time coming here, and, um, and my Aunt Lisa, hi Aunt Lisa, uh, she brought me here, and I would just like to say, um, on Friday at the prayer service, uh, my knee's been fractured for like a little bit, so after I went to that prayer service, my knee just like stopped hurting. <laughs> And like, I've been able to do all the things that I couldn't do before. And then also, like recently I've been feeling like I've been straying from God and from his word and from what he has wanted me to do. But tonight, or this morning, I feel I finally reconnected with him. I feel that in my heart and in my life, I wanna do what I can to serve the Lord. So yeah, thank you.
Do I have any more Gen Z or testimonies that are going to come up? You don't have to. I'm not pressuring you. I just want to, you know, open it up. Hand it off. Just think about it. We're just going to wait. Hey, so my name is Joseph, and... Uh, I've been a part of Bethel for the last two years. Not here, but Northgate, Alaska, Bethel, Reading. And I'm currently a student at LCU, but what God's done in my life in the last two years is incredible. There is an attack on Gen Z right now, and it's an identity attack. And my parents, I grew up in the church, I was Mennonite, and I left when I was 18, and I came out as gay. And I promise that that is an attack of the enemy on Gen Z because he knows who we are. Today, I'm standing here. I am totally free. And Jesus is absolutely everything in my life. And so I know this sounds crazy, but if you're here and you're Gen Z and you're struggling with identity issues, I want you to raise your hand because there's power in this room, there is freedom. The truth will set you free because the truth is, is that you're created in God's image. You're not created the way the devil says you are. You're created in his image and that's the truth. And anything outside of that has to come into alignment. And so that's just like, I just wanna pray over you guys. Just, Father God, I just thank you for Gen Z, for this revival movement that's happening. And I just declare identity right now over Gen Z. Remove this weight that is over Gen Z right now. Be loosed in the name of Jesus, the identity of the Father. In the name of Jesus, amen. Our ministry teams, pastoral care, are you around? Can you wave at me if you're on our ministry teams, pastoral care up here? Hey, any of those hands you guys see waving, if there's a response that you wanna be prayed for and ministered to, specifically in the area of identity and breakthrough, just come and find them. They're gonna pray with you. Mm. Do we have any more Gen Z who wants to step up? Mm. Come on out. Uh, hi, I'm Jordan. I, um, for the past little bit, I've really been, I haven't wanted to go to church. I haven't really wanted to do much. And I came here today, and when we were talking about anxiety, I was kind of listening, and I was like, meh, yeah, I have anxiety. Um, and when you said, yield to the Holy Spirit, he said, get on your knees. And I have struggled so long with being afraid of what people will think of me when I do things or when I say something. And I was like, I don't want to do that. And he said, get on your knees. So I went out and I got on my knees and I was praying a little bit. And he said, go up to the front. And I said, no. And he said, go up to the front. So I walked up to the front and I'm standing there and I started praying and I heard him say, the end is written. The devil does not win. Do not live your life in fear of what people will say. Live your life for me and do not let fear win. Hey, come on over. My name is Dylan Freeland. Uh, and I have trouble with pride, like my pride. Uh, like my ego gets in the way of things. And uh, 
I argue with my father and, and people, and uh, I have trouble seeing other perspectives. I would like to pray for my dad and my mother and, and Anna and Papa and my grandpa. Amen. Wow. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Woo! 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 God's coming at you with some joy. <laughs> hey, if you want the radical joy of God to be poured out in your life, can you just lift up your hands before the Lord right now? You know, some of us, we, str we struggle. We're like a, a giant oak tree whose branches breathe in the wind, but the Lord wants to release radical joy over you right now. Whoa, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Come on, breathe it in and say, Holy Spirit. Woo! <laughs> Thank you that you break. I feel like, Lord, you're breaking off addiction to social media even right now. People who spend hours and hours on Instagram and, and, and just wasting your life on those reels. Well, there's a new algorithm being released into you right now. There's a new algorithm from the Spirit being released into you. You're going to start to have downloads from the Lord. So, Lord, I thank you that you're breaking off addiction to dopamine and social media, Father, and replacing it with hunger and thirst and desire for you in your presence. Woo! Oh, I
We're going to continue to seek after the Lord and to press into this. I do want to let you know, though, if you, if you have kids in our kids' ministry, if you wouldn't mind kind of making your way back there so that they can be released. And I'll tell you what, if you feel led, and I hope you do, bring them back in here. Bring them back in here so that we can pray for them. They can experience this atmosphere. We're going to continue to, to worship and to pray and to press in to what the Lord's doing today so this doesn't have to be over. We're just going to keep going for a while. And I just want to encourage you, the best way that I can describe the revival as I've experienced it so far has been that it is like a day at the beach in the spirit. When you go to the beach, you sit down, you relax, you start to become aware of the breeze on your skin and the sound of the waves. And there is a, a constant a consistency of that current that keeps coming and going and coming and going. And so you just sit here and what you experience in that moment is peace. So I want you to think about while you're sitting here, while you're, uh, you're engaging and you're, you're drinking into the presence of the Lord, He is releasing supernatural peace over you, peace over your mind, peace over anxiety, peace, all the stuff that we carry in, all the worries that we brought in before this started pauses and ceases in here and that is why people are so hungry for the presence of God because we are at rest we are at peace when we are united with our maker when we're abiding in the vine so we're going to continue to worship you can sit you can stand you can be up here at the front at the altar we're going to continue pressing in if you have any testimonies that you'd like to share you can come find my wife up here at the front talk to her about it um, and we're just going to continue to press in for just a little longer. Let me tell you, this was a wave, but there are more waves coming. There is something coming to this house, to this city, where his manifest glory and presence is going to be opened and unlocked over this place. We're going to experience God in a way that you're going to be talking about for generations down the line. So Bethel Cleveland, I bless you in the name of Jesus. I bless you to be filled with this glory, filled with this presence, but filled with this hunger too, that the Lord would plant inside of you the seed of his glory, that the same spirit spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, that there would be a switch turned in you that you realize that it flips from your head to your heart, that that spirit lives in you. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to continue praying. Feel free to stay, but be blessed and release. If you feel led to give in the offering today and you want to sow your seed, you can drop those into those boxes on your way out. Thanks for pressing in being people after God's heart. And we 